This is another Sunday that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it and share his word. I'm going to share the word of God with you. And today the topic that I want to share with you is surrendering to God. Surrendering to God. How we surrender to God. Shall we pray? So Father, we just want to thank you for today. We pray that even as we talk about surrendering to you, it's a very important topic. How we surrender to you. Surrendering to you. Pray that Lord, your Holy Spirit will lead us into a clear understanding at the end of the day. We surrender our all in all to you because that is the purpose for which you created us. In Jesus' name, Amen. The word surrendering or to surrender means handing one's position, possession, and everything to an opponent or superior power or authority. It has the idea of submission, succumbing, or yielding one's members to another. Each of us go through very trying times that leads us to situations where there comes the need to put our trust or confidence in something. As somebody says, some put their trust in horses and chariots, but we put our trust in the Lord. It means that some put surrender their lives to these material things of power and defense, but we put our power and our defense in the Lord our God. Sometimes our situation is due to failure that comes our way and we are not too sure that there is hope anywhere else. Have you got yourself into a deep hole that you don't even know how you will be able to get out of it? Today, we want to look at ways that God has made for us to redeem ourselves when we get into situations that we ourselves cannot take ourselves out of. Let us turn our attention to the life of Jacob, the son of Isaac, for inspiration on how we can surrender to God in all our situations. You know, the songwriter said, all to Jesus I surrender. And I hope that by the end of this message, you will surrender your all in all to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to look at Genesis chapter 32, verses 9 to 13. Then I will look at Genesis 32 again, 22 to 32. So first I start with Genesis 32 and I read from verse 9 to 12. And that is what it says. Then Jacob prayed, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, O Lord, you told me, return to your own land and to your relatives. And you promised me I will treat you kindly. I am not worthy of all the unfailing love and faithfulness you have shown to me, your servant. When I left home and crossed the Jordan River, I owned nothing except a walking stick. Now my household fills two large camps. Oh Lord, please rescue me from the hand of my brother Esau. I am afraid that he is coming to attack me, along with my wives and children. But you promised me I will surely treat you kindly, and I will multiply your descendants until they become as numerous as the sands along the seashore. Too many to count. That is the first reading, which is Genesis 32, 9 to 12. Now we turn our attention to Genesis 32, 22 to 32. During the night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two servant wives, his eleven sons, and crossed the Jabbok River with them. After taking them to the other side, he sent over all his possessions. This left Jacob, Jacob all alone in the camp. And a man came and wrestled with him until the dawn began to break. When the man saw that he would not win the match, he touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of its socket. Then the man said, Let me go, for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Hallelujah. What is your name? The man asked. He replied, Jacob. Your name will no longer be Jacob, the man told him. From now on, you will be called Israel because you have fought with God and with men and have won. Please tell me your name, Jacob said. Why do you want to know my name? 
The man replied, Then he blessed Jacob. Hallelujah. Jacob named the place Peniel, which means face of God. For he said, I have seen God face to face, yet my life has been spared. The sun was rising as Jacob left Peniel, and he was limping because of the injury to his hip. Even today, the people of Israel don't eat the tendon near the hip socket because of what happened that night when the man strained the tendon of Jacob's hip. Today we want to look at casting your cares on God. Casting your cares on God. We also want to look at contending with God. Contending with God. We want to look at giving up control to God. Giving up control to God. And lastly, we want to look at being content with limping. Being content with limping. First, we want to look at casting your cares before God. In Genesis 32 verse 11, Jacob prayed when he had left Laban and he got to the middle, he was on his way to go to his brother Esau because God says he should go back. He says, go back. And when he got to the middle of the road, he was not too sure that I should continue to Esau because remember, Esau wanted to kill him and he ran away from, from Esau and went to uh, Laban's place. He stayed there for so many years. Now he's coming back. In the middle of the road, he feels threatened. He feels that now. He is not too sure of what to do with himself. So that is where he cast his cares upon God by praying this prayer, which is in Genesis 32, 11. He says, O oh Lord, please rescue me from the hand of my brother Esau. I'm afraid that he is coming to attack me along with my wives and children. You know, when uh, this, thing, uh, this thing, Jacob sent word to Esau, that he was coming, Esau prepared with 400 men and he was going to meet him with these 400 men. But Jacob was coming with his wife and children and his animals. So he was afraid, this man coming with 400 men, he is going to kill me because already I have taken his birthright and he threatened me and I ran away. So he was afraid. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. God cares for you. If you are a Jacob and you are in the trouble and you know that somebody is going to kill you, somebody is it's actually going to take everything that you have from you because you have wronged the person or because of a, a conflict, cast all your cares on God because God cares for his own. Genesis 32, 12 says, Then in his prayer, he Jacob was reminding God of his promises. He says, but you promise me, I will surely treat you kindly. When we give our lives to Christ, there's a promise from God that I will take care of you. I will be present with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will make things go well for you. So those promises are always with us. But remember, this world is full of a mess. Those promises are there. But as Jacob faced it, you face the realities of life. The issue with Esau will not go away. Those struggles will not go away. Those conflicts will not just vanish into thin air. But he still believed that God is there. In a situation like that, you cannot do it by yourself. You need to surrender to God. To so surrender your unanswered questions to God. So here, the unanswered questions are, Esau is coming to kill me, but you have promised that you take care of me. So how do I handle it? Start to walk by faith, not by sight. Let go and let go. So here, you cast all your cares. When you get into a situation, you surrender everything to God. The songwriter says, I surrender all. You surrender all of it, your cares, your woes, your fears, your anxieties, your conflicts, your confusion. Surrender all of it unto God. Amen. Two, you have to contend with God. You don't, you don't just surrender it passively and you are there. God, ah, well, these are my problems. I'm still... No, you need to specifically and intentionally contend with God. With it. Genesis 32, 26 says, Then the man said, Let me go, for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Here he is bargaining with him. You know Moses bargained with God. He says if there are ten men in, 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 in you know 
in Solomon Gura, will you spare them? You have to back in with God. You have to be content with Him. You have to be transact business with God yourself. Know your God and content with your God. Argue with Him. Tell Him what you, 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 you feel. Jacob is a fighter. He fought with his brother. He fought with his father-in-law. And, and now he's still a fighter. He will not want to lose any moment. And God is also one of his, 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 his people. So now he contends with God. God, please, do this for me. And God sends a man who is a representation of himself. And, 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 and Jacob takes hold of the man. After he has prayed and he saw the man, he takes hold of the man. And the man, he wears the man until now it is coming to daybreak. The man said, let me go. He said, I won't let you go until you bless me. Can we say to God, I won't let you leave me in this particular situation until you assure me. May you seek assurance from God. May you seek some insurance from God in your situation. It is only that that will make you realize that God is your God. Thirdly, you have to surrender all control to God. You have to surrender all control to God. And these verses that we are reading, verse 27 of, of, our, of our text, it says, What is your name? And the man, that is the man who uh, Jacob has taken hold of. He says, What is your name? He asked Jacob, What is your name? And Jacob replied, Jacob. You know, it is very, very important for us to know that names have meanings. And before God asks the question, he knows the answer. The answer that uh, you will give is, some, is, is to help you understand your situation and be able to surrender more and more to God. There, God, through his, the man he was working to, says, your name will no longer be Jacob. Then God told uh, Jacob, your name will no longer be Jacob. The man told him, from now on, you will be called Israel because you fought with God and with men and have won. Give up control. Give up control to God. What is your name? It is a lie to think that you are in control. You are not in control. Sometimes we think we are in control of our life, of our situation, uh, of our struggles, uh, of our strives and everything. No, we are not in control. You cannot be in control because in this world you need God. You need Jesus. You need the Holy Spirit to be able to go through this life successfully. When God asks the question, as I said, he has the answer. What is your name? What is my name? His name is Persistent manipulator. He's manipulated everybody in his life. That is his name. Jacob means manipulator, deceiver, and he's been able to live up to his name. What is your name? Is it your name lazy, loser, boss, owner, cheater? What is your name? And there on the angel, the, the, the God through the, the, the angel that he sent to represent him says, I am taking charge of you. You will no longer be a manipulator. You will no longer be a loser. You will no longer be a cheat. You will not be, be a deceiver. You will not be this kind of person who goes around, lying around and cheating everybody around him, deceiving the situation, everybody around him. You will no longer be that such. You will no longer be that sad, sorrowful person. You will not, not, no longer be somebody who is always down there. I want to raise you up. I want to take you from where you are. I'm taking charge. Surrender control of whatever you have to God at the moment, just like Jacob did. You are going to be Israel. And Israel here means Prince of God. You are no longer going to be Jacob, the per persistent manipulator. You are now going to be Israel, that is the, 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 what, the prince or the princess of the Most High God. You are going to be the prince 
with a privileged situation with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. This is a change of name. And may you, your name be changed. May your identity be changed. May your profile be changed. May your portfolio be changed by God. By giving up control to Him. And He will do the rest. The fourth is content with limping. Genesis 32, 31 says, The sun was rising as Jacob left Peniel, and he was limping because of the injury to his knee. And Jacob, after that socket has been taken from his hip, Jacob limped the whole of his life. You are no longer going to be able to run to manipulate people. That was it. Jacob was always running. He's always on the run to manipulate somebody. Whether Laban or he's going to manipulate uh, this thing, uh, uh, his, his own brother. He was manipulating everybody around him. You are no longer going to run. So the, 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 the speed with which he does the deceiving, the speed with which he does all the swiftness with which he deceives people and manipulates them and takes the things from them, God now took away that speed from him. You shall walk with a limp by faith and not by sight all your life. Hallelujah. So you are going to step out with your limp in faith, knowing that the control of your life is with God and you have to be content with your limping. We are all going to have a limp. If you are a Christian, then you should know that you will be a person with a limp. It is that limp that makes you rely on God. It is that limp that God takes away from you that makes you feel that you have to rely on God for things. If you are not a limping Christian, then you are not a true genuine Christian. A limping Christian is somebody who cannot boast of himself. God takes, God touches us at our strongest point and takes away that that makes us feel that we are strong without him. Do you hear what I'm saying? God will touch you at your strongest point. And that is why maybe today you are struggling and you need to surrender to God. God will touch you at your strongest point. The strongest point of this man is his swiftness to deceive and God took it away. He cannot run anymore. Now he has to walk with a limp and with that limp he's always reminded that the control of his life is with God. And Jacob was very content with it because he never made mention of it. He never complained to God about it. He just went on by faith, walking and not running. Sad but I'll surrender to God. It's my limp. Sorrowful, but I'll surrender to God. That's my limp. My reputation is in tatters, but the reputation is what is, I, I really like the most. That is the, the, the strongest point of my, my, my area, but God has taken it away, away from me, and he's giving me with a limp. I'm no longer with that high status that I always want to be. May God take and touch your strongest point. Give you a link, but give you abundance of life. And the blessings that God wants for, for, for you will now on flow as you live a content life with a link of faith. May God bless you as you realize that in all your struggles, He is with you and He will never forsake you. Cast your cares upon Him because He cares for you. Content with Him by letting Him know that He is the only one that you want to rely on. You contend with Him saying, God, if you don't take care of this situation that I'm surrendering to you, I have nowhere to go. You give up control completely. Whatever you think is your strong point, may you leave that strong point to God and God will make it stronger. And may you continue with a link, knowing that in your weakness, you are made strong by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Thank you very much for listening to me. This is Reverend Anu coming to you with the word of God. Today's message is very important. Surrendering our all in all to Jesus. The blood is enough to take care of everything that we have. May the blood of Jesus surround you and take full control of every situation of yours. May you experience the presence of God in the situation that you find yourself. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you so much for listening to me. This is Reverend Professor Alan coming your way with the message of God. Make a date with us again next Sunday at 7.30 a.m. and every Sunday. Shalom.